Father, we just give this worship set to you, God. We thank you that you've given us this opportunity to worship you and love on you in this capacity. And Father, may you be glorified and magnified with our worship in Jesus' mighty name.
Jesus. Ooh, Lord, meet me here. I need you to meet me in my situation. Ooh, cause all I want, God, hallelujah, is all you are. Meet me here. Not for a minute, not for a minute. Father, we just thank you for this time of worship, Lord, and 
God, we thank you for our hearts. God, just connecting with you and God and you lifting our hearts once again. And Father, we thank you, Father, as we worship you and meet with you, God. We thank you that, Father, every fear is lifted. God, every sin is washed away, God. Father, every thing in our heart and our life, God, that's a lie, be removed because we're connecting with our Father who not only has truth but is truth. And Lord, we thank you. Let your truth illuminate each and every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Welcome, welcome. I am so glad that you are tuning in with us today. Maybe you're at home, chilling on the couch with your children. Maybe you're still in bed and you just pick up that smartphone real quick to tune in to Sunday morning service. No matter where you're at, we are glad that you're tuning in. Do me a favor and drop a pic if you're bold enough in our comments of what you're doing right now. Give me your view what you're doing, how you're tuning in, and uh, that would just make me smile, okay? Because I miss you guys. I miss you guys so much. I love my church family, and I look forward to the day that we can all come together again, gather together, and worship underneath one roof. But I know that we are still worshiping one God together in unity in many, many, many different homes. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you will, right where you're at, at home, would you just do me a favor and bow your heads with me if you're able to, if your kids aren't climbing on you, if you're able to bow your heads or grab a hold of your children and your husband and and, uh, just grab uh, hands and let's pray together right now so that our hearts are prepared to receive his word today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the way maker. And that you have made a way for us to enter into relationship with you. God, I pray that you would encourage us today with your word. God, that you would show us that you're making a way out of no way. Lord, that you would show us, Lord God, the way out of temptation. Lord, that you would show us that you are the only way to salvation, Lord. God, I thank you for encouraging your people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the God who is in control and that you love us and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So, Lord, I pray today that you would be the lifter of our heads, that we would be able to focus our minds and our hearts and our attitudes on you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. It's so good to be here again. So let's get into the word today. We're going to get into Luke chapter 5, verse 17 and 26, and we're going to continue on that series, The Waymaker. One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They came from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So when he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home, immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home, praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were 
filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Jesus is our way maker. And we need to be like him, right? Because we were made in his image and he wants to use us to also make a way. And so friends, I want to encourage you today from this short passage in the gospel that God wants to use you like he used those four friends to help make a way. They made a way when it seemed like there was no way, friends. So the very first thing that we need to do when we can't find a way and we feel like we are stuck, we feel like we are confused, we feel like we don't know what's going on, then we need to look for the way out of no way. You know what? Right where you're at today, if you have a family with you, why don't you go ahead and look to your child and say, we need to look for a way out of no way because God makes a way out of no way. This is my encouragement to you. When the door is blocked, raise the roof, friends. Come on. You remember that saying? I'm going back to the 1990s on you guys today. Raise the roof. When the door is blocked, when there's obstacles in your way and you feel like there's no way to get through, then find another way. God is going to make a way, but he wants you to come to him, even though there may be obstacles blocking your way. This is the thing, friends. Right now, we're, we're in a time, we're in our life that we have never, ever experienced before. This COVID-19 that we're all going through, it's a crisis that no one in our lifetime has experienced. No one in our parents' lifetime has experienced something like this. And so you have all kinds of emotions going on right now. And maybe you feel like you're stuck. Maybe you feel like um, you've had some obstacles that you don't know how to overcome. Maybe you don't see the way out of no way. Or maybe you see the way out of no way, but maybe it's being blocked just like the friends who gathered their, their, their friend who was crippled, they got him together. You know, in those days, there wasn't a weird wheelchair. He, they weren't just pushing him. They carried a mat with him on it. And they got to the house, and yet the way was blocked. And still, they didn't give up. Friends, we do need to recognize our reality. We don't need to have our heads buried in the sand. Come on, somebody. I know sometimes we want to just bury our heads in the sand and act like nothing's going on. Let's just binge out on Netflix for a little bit and forget all of our troubles. Let's just go do something else and forget everything that's going on. God wants us to recognize our reality, but he also wants us to recognize that he is greater than our reality. And he wants us to recognize that there is a way out of no way. Friends, right now, you might be in a season where you feel like you have just failed over and over. But friends, I'm here to tell you today, you may have failed, but you are not a failure. Maybe you're in a, a place today and you're looking around your house and you're like, this is a mess. My whole house is a mess. My life is a mess. No, friends, you may be in a messy house, but you are not a mess. Let me encourage you today, friends. You may even be sick. But this sickness does not have to lead to death. And friends, even if the worst case scenario happens as Christians, we can have peace because we know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. That we know that when we leave this earth, when we take our last breath, we will wake up in heaven, friends. There is a way out of no way. Friends, I want to encourage you by a quote by Stephen. Covey, The Seven Habits of a Highly Effective People. If you've never read that book, it's really good. And he says this, we are not defined by our circumstances, but by the way we respond to them. Friends, COVID-19 is not going to define our generation, but it can refine us if you will allow God to do that work in you. And so I want to encourage you. This is how Paul says it. He wants us to be refined. And he says it like this in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Friends, we need to recognize our reality. But moreover, we need to recognize the God who can change our reality. I'm going to just pause for just a second so you can just insert 
And amen. Go ahead and give some praise hands in the comment because you know that is a good word. God can change our reality and we need to go to him to do so. And when there's obstacles in the way, like when the crowd is blocking us, we need to be like the woman with the issue of blood and press through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garments. These four friends grabbed a hold of their friend who was paralyzed and couldn't move. And they had faith to take their friend to Jesus. See, these were nameless and faceless friends. Well, not faceless, right? Because we all have a face. But they were nameless friends. Four friends who had the audacious belief and faith that Jesus is who he says. He is. They were boldly coming to Jesus and saying, I believe you care more about people than this house, than this building. And you know what? I believe the, that the Lord is teaching his church today that he cares more about his people than the building that we worship in. He cares more about what you are going through, the sickness in your body, the struggles in your marriage, the struggles with your children, your finances, the mental health that you have. He cares more about that than material things, friends. And so these four friends, they found a way out of no way. The door was blocked and they couldn't get through because of the crowd. And so they decided to raise the roof. Friends, today we need to go back to the 1990s with that saying, and we need to raise the roof on our faith today. We need to go back and raise the roof on the disbelief that we have and say, nope, there's no room for you here. You got to go in Jesus' name. We need to believe God is who he says he is. And we need to find that way out of no way. Friends, what encourages me is these, these nameless Friends. They didn't, the, the Bible didn't mention their name. It just proves to us today that it doesn't matter where you come from. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank account. It doesn't matter what titles you have. It matters. You, what matters is your faith in Christ Jesus. We don't have to be famous or wealthy to have a huge impact on someone's life today. Friends, you can be the instrument that God uses to bring others to Christ. But you got to find that way out of no way because there's a lot of people in our world today that are hopeless. And you need to be that hope to a hopeless generation. There's a lot of people in our world today that are so sad and downhearted and even depressed. And you need to be that light to them today so that you can help them see the way out of no way. See, these friends were determined to get their miracle. I want God to raise up a generation of people. This is my prayer, friends, that he would raise up a generation of people who will have a holy determination to get their miracle, that would have a holy determination to see their breakthrough, that would have a holy determination to get past the obstacle in their life. Come on. Friends, this is the people of God that he is raising up today. And we need to, we need to join that movement. We need to join that movement. See, it wasn't the cripples man's faith that caused the breakthrough. It was the four nameless friends. It was the, it was the men who carried the mat. It was the men who, who made a hole through the roof. It was the men who lowered uh, their friend down right in front of the, uh, feet of Jesus. They were the ones who brought the breakthrough. They were the ones who had the faith and the action that accompanies faith to find the way out of no way. Friends, God has called us to be those kind of friends. God has called us to be that kind of Christian. You know, the thing that we can do right now that can help people who feel like they're just, they're stuck. They don't see the way out. They don't, they don't see the way past uh, the crowd to get to Jesus. They don't see the way past their problems to get to their breakthrough. You know what we can do to help them receive the breakthrough? We can intercede. See, an intercessor is one who is just a mediator. It's a person who mediates on behalf of somebody else. This is what the four friends did for their friend who was crippled, their friend who was not able to move, their friend who was paralyzed, their friend who needed a miracle. They mediated for him and they interceded for him. And friends, God is calling us to intercede for our family, 
for our friends, for the hopeless, for the downhearted, for the one who is sick right now. God is calling us to be intercessors, to be prayer warriors, to be mediators. I think of Abraham in the Old Testament. He had a, a, a friend, he had a, a really a relative, a family member. It was Lot, who was more like a son to him that was in a city that was getting ready to be destroyed. I'm telling you, it was worse than COVID-19. There was going to be uh, just a destruction of the city, that, the town that he was living in. And he would have he would have been taken out if it wasn't for Abraham interceding and praying to God to make a way out of no way. A lot. And you know what? Because of that intercession, an angel led Lot and his family away from destruction. Friends, God wants to use our intercession today to lead people away from destruction, to lead them away from death. But we have to agree with God and his spirit and what he's doing today. How about let's be like the four nameless friends who believes God is who he says he is, who believes there's a way even when it seems like there's no way. Come on, somebody. That's a good time to say amen and amen. So when there is something blocking your way, friends, then we need to raise the roof. Come on, one more time just for fun. Yep, your kids are like, what's going on? I've never seen that move before. Yep, we're going to go ahead and put that on TikTok, young people. Let's get that back in style again. Raise the roof, all right? Listen, friends, I want to encourage you. God is a way maker and he wants to use you to be a way maker as well. He wants you to find that way out of no way. He also wants you to be able to remember the way out of temptation. I'm about to preach right now, okay, friends, because th we're in a season right now that, that God wants to use us in such a powerful way. He has taken away a lot of our distractions, but the temptation is to waste this time. The temptation is to be caught doing something that we shouldn't be doing instead of praying and waiting for what God wants to reveal on the earth today. That's the temptation. But this is what the scripture says about temptation. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will per also provide a way out so that you can endure it. These four friends could have been tempted to give up. They could have fell into temptation to give up because the, the way was blocked. They couldn't enter into the house. It was too much. It was too crowded. They could have said, you know what? We came here. We carried him. We're tired. We did our best. So I guess that's good enough. And they could have gave up. And friends, how many times are we in that situation? where We work and we work like, like Peter. We fished all night and we didn't catch anything. But yet. When Jesus says, cast your net to the other side, we have to be willing. But the temptation will always be there to say, you know what? I'm tired. I give up. I don't see the way. Friends, let me encourage you. There is a way out of temptation. There is a way out. Refuse to give up today. Refuse to give in to the lies of the enemy that says that you are not good enough, that you are not worthy. Refuse to listen to his lies today and encourage yourself in the Lord because there is a way out of temptation. And that's, that way is through Jesus. He opens those windows. He opens those ways out. So, matter of fact, I want to um, give you five practical ways Five practical ways or, or five practices, if you will, to overcome temptation. These are just five practical ways to overcome temptation. Five practices. One, we need to recognize your tendency to sin. Come on. I know that's hard to, to, to examine ourselves at times and to really recognize our tendency to sin, but we all have a tendency to sin. Some of us are given to different kinds of sin. You know, for me, I have a tendency when I'm feeling overwhelmed, and come on, somebody in this season, I've been feeling overwhelmed, is to get uptight, anxious, frustrated, and snappy. 
Woo! I had to watch my mouth. Come on. Anyone else out there like that? You know, maybe you have a temptation where you're feeling overwhelmed. It's like you just got to get that Ben and Jerry's and eat the whole pint while binge watching something. Okay, maybe I'm confessing that sin too. Listen, we need to recognize our own um, tendency to sin because we're, the Bible says that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. So recognize your tendency. And if you don't know maybe what your weaknesses are, ask the Lord to show you. Like I know that anger given into uh, anger is a weakness of mine. And so I have to always give that over to the Lord. I have to walk away to go pray. I have to walk away to go cry. I have to walk away just to bite my tongue at times, right? Recognize your tendency to sin and give that over to the Lord. And then another practice to overcome temptation is to flee from temptation. Just like Joseph, sometimes we have to just run. Sometimes we have to just get out of this situation. Joseph had a run from Potiphar's wife. Listen, my husband says to men all the time, I've heard him say this, and I believe it, it applies to women as well, that lust is the kind of temptation that we cannot entertain. We have to completely flee from it. There's some temptations that we have to just flee from, and that's one of them. So I want to encourage you to flee from temptation. A third practice is to resist temptation with the word of God. Sometimes that temptation is just in our mind, right? The battlefield begins in our mind, and we need to know the word. That's why I'm always on young people, especially get into your Bible, get into your word, hold on to the scripture. I've talked to some of you. Some of you guys know that I've talked to you about, hey, find your scripture for this season. What is the scripture that you're holding on to during uh, COVID-19? What is the, the, the scripture that you're holding on to while you're quarantined in your house? Hold on to that scripture because the scripture is the word of God and it is our weapon. It is how we fight the enemy. So hold on to the scriptures, friends, and, and use that to resist temptation. And then I, I think another good practice is to refocus your mind and heart with praise. I hear Pastor Dorinthia, I, and didn't she do an amazing job today with worship? But I hear Pastor Dorinthia um, say that worship is our weapon. And it is. Worship is our weapon. We need to hold on to that. And you know what? We need to put our worship on by ourselves in our home. We need to put our worship on. Let your kids wake up and the first thing they hear is not the news. That's probably freaking them out. But instead, have worship throughout your house. I remember um, uh, Terry Rowe was like a spiritual mentor to, to Josh and I when we first uh, came to really get discipled and know the Lord. And I remember now this was back in the late 90s. So it, it wasn't as easy to have music in every room because you didn't have internet radio and, and whatnot. Right. But she somehow had like cassette, cassette tapes. And I think we had CDs then. And she had little radios all around her house. And even when you would go to the bathroom, she had worship music on. But she surrounded her house in worship and it created an atmosphere. You can do that in your home. Put worship on. Let your children tell Alexa, hey, play Pan or Pandora worship, you know, and pick your favorite channel or, or Spotify throughout your house and, and, and hook it up where when your children wake up in the morning, the first thing they hear is praises. And I'm telling you, friends, that's going to help everybody resist temptation in your home. And then finally, friends, the last um, practice that I want to give you that I think is just so important. If you feel like you're falling into temptation in any kind of way, we need to repent quickly. We just need to repent quickly so that we can move forward. And so I want to encourage you, um, you know, don't let your heart be hardened. When you mess up and we all mess up, repent. Have, ask God to forgive you. He is faithful to forgive us and take our sin as far as the east is from the west. I encourage you, repent quickly. Ask the Lord to give you a soft heart so that you can repent quickly, that you can ask him to give you a change of heart, a change of mind, and a change of direction. That's what repentance means, okay? Sometimes, friends, your breakthrough is so close. Sometimes it's right there. You can see it. You can see it. But you quit too soon. And that's why I want to encourage you today. If you've been tempted to give up, if you've been tempted to quit, refuse to give up. Know that God is bringing us through this season. And he is bringing us through better, not bitter. He is bringing us through, blooming for him and shining for him. And so allow him to do the work 
that only he can do. Resist the temptation to complain about everything. I know it's hard. I have four children at home. I know we all have different things we could complain about. Dishes piling up. Come on, somebody. You've unloaded that dishwasher three times today, and you are tempted to complain. We all have different things in our life that we could complain to, but resist the temptation to do so because God is refining us and making us more like him. And when we quit and we give up and we just give into the flesh and we quit too soon, man, sometimes we miss our breakthrough. And I don't want us to miss our breakthrough. And I don't want us to miss what God is trying to teach us in this season. So I want to encourage you when there seems like the way is blocked, remember God will give you a way out of temptation. When it seems like you can't go any further, God will give you the strength to keep on going, friends. Finally, what we need to do when we can't find the way is we need to recognize that the way to salvation is always Jesus Christ. He is the way to salvation. When you feel like you are stuck and you just need saved, right? You need saving. And I'm not just talking about spiritual salvation, but of course that too. And we're going to get into that in a moment. But when you are just in this place and you're like, help me, Lord, come on. Who's been there this season? Who's, who's just had to say, God, help me. That's the only way I know how to pray right now. Help me. God is giving you the reason to cry out to him. And he's also trying to show you today that he is the way to salvation. John 14, 6, this is a familiar passage and many of us know it, but it says this, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the father except through me. See, the paralyzed man needed forgiveness even more than he needed healing. Listen to me, friends. Sometimes we're coming to God for what we think that we need, but he sees the greater need that we really have. I want that to seek in for a minute. Sometimes you're coming to God because you think that you need uh, your husband to understand you more. But God's really trying to show you that he's doing a work in you. And what you really need is peace. What you really need is the calmness of Christ. Sometimes you are coming to, you come to God because you want to seek his hand and what he can do for you. But he's saying, I want to show you my heart. I want to show you who I am. Friends, the paralyzed man needed forgiveness more than healing. And Jesus applies this by addressing his spiritual state first. Salvation is still the greatest miracle that any of us can receive. Friends, the thing is that even though this was the greatest miracle that, that anyone could receive, there were people that were there, the Pharisees, who were the, the teachers of the law. They were the religious leaders of the day. And they were there and they were criticizing Jesus. And they were criticizing what they saw. I mean, a miracle just took place in their very sight. And yet they criticized Jesus and they criticized the, the man. If you may remember in the beginning of this message, I read to you Luke 5, 20 and 21, but I want to read it again to remind you that there's, there's always haters around. There's always people who are criticizing and listen to how Jesus handles that situation. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, again, the faith of the friends, he said, friends or friend, your sin is forgiven. Then the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who's speaking blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? See, there's so often skeptics in our life. And if we're not careful, we can, we can allow the critical spirit that is so strong in our generation hold us back from doing what we know God has called us to do. But Jesus didn't give in to the skeptics. He knew what was in their hearts. And he was trying to show them who he was. But see, they didn't want to see it. They refused to see it because, see, the religious leaders of the day, they understood that only God had authority to forgive sins. But Jesus was revealing to them that day, I am God. I am the son of God. And I have authority to forgive sins. And friends, he still has authority today. Maybe there's something going on in your home, in your life, 
right now that you need to, through Christ, take authority over. I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, how can, how can I reach my teenager in this season? I want to encourage you, parents. You have authority in your home. If you are a Christian believer, you have authority in your home to bind and rebuke things. You need to turn your home into a sanctuary. You need to get out that oil. You need to do what it takes. Pray, and you need to take, take authority because Jesus had died on the cross so that we could have freedom, and he gave us authority in him. He says, all authority I'm giving to you now. So Jesus was revealing himself to his critics that he is Lord and that he is Savior. And because they refused to believe him, he said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and show you I'm healer too. And I don't know about you, friends, but I know and I need all of it. I need him to be my Savior, my Lord, and my healer. And the generation that we live in right now in our world, we need to see Jesus manifest his salvation, his, his power, his healing, and God wants to do that through you and through me. And so, friends, I want to encourage you today that Jesus has authority to forgive sins. Maybe you're listening in. Maybe someone said, hey, you know what? I want you to tune in to Vision Ministries. I want you to hear what they have to say today. And you're like, okay, this, this lady seems like she drank a little bit too much coffee. That's right. I did. But it's the real excitement that I have is because I love Jesus so much and he's changed my life so much. I know that if he could do it for me, he can do it for you. I know just like he healed that crippled man and, and he revealed that he is the way to salvation. He wants to reveal that to you today too. You do not have to be uncertain about your salvation. You can know today that if you took your last breath today, that you could wake up in heaven. Jesus says that if we believe in our hearts that he is Lord and confess him with our mouth, that we will be saved. So I want to encourage you, take some time. It's not a fancy prayer. It's, it's, it's not some kind of magical thing. It is just faith, friends, that we say, God, I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross for my salvation. I believe that he rose again on the third day. I believe that he is Lord, Savior, and healer. I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, and I accept him into my heart, and I pray and ask that you will change me today. Friends, I want to encourage you. If God is tugging on your heart and maybe you're rededicating your life and you're saying, you know what, I'm I need to get right with God. Or maybe this is the first time ever that you've, you've really contemplated giving your heart to the Lord. I want you to reach out to us today. Let us encourage you. Let us disciple you. Let us help you along the way because Jesus is the way the truth, and the life. And it is, friends, a journey, but it is exciting to follow him. And so I want to encourage you today. You can be like those four nameless friends. You can be people who bring people, other people to Christ. You can be people who find a way out of no way. When the, when the road seems blocked, when you don't know what else to do, raise the roof. Raise the roof when you feel like you are just overcome with temptation and you don't know what to do. God will show you the way out of temptation. And when you are feeling like you're in this place that you all you can do is cry out, help me, Lord. Jesus wants to remind you that he is the way of salvation, friends. And so I'm going to put this recap up here on the screen as you see it. And I want you to know. That when you don't know what to do, when you don't know where to go, when you don't see the way out, look for these things. Look for these things. Look and see and taste and see that Jesus is real and he wants to do something amazing in you. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Thank you so much for being a light in a dark world because Jesus needs you. And I don't know about you, but I know this message of the four nameless friends who brought their friend to Jesus for healing, it encourages me that I don't have to be popular. I don't have to be famous. I don't have to be rich to make an impact. And friends, neither do you. God wants to use you right where you're at to make an impact for our generation. 
God bless you guys. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. We are coming through this season. God bless you. We'll see you soon.